me and a couple guys from college um, looking for a way to not get real jobs. And how come none of the technology that's going into windsurfers and sporting equipment, um, how come none of that's in kites yet? We maxed out a couple of credit cards, bought a sewing machine, making a kite that looked like nothing anybody would ever seen before. Ben Saltzman here from Kitty Hawk Kites. I'm standing here with Mark Reed, the founder of Prism Kites. Mark, welcome to the Right Kite Festival. Thank you. <laughs> so why don't you tell Thanks us, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, tell us a little bit about, um, you know, Prism Kites, how you got into the industry, how you started your company. Well, it was so long ago, I barely remember at this point. We've been at it, this is actually our 30th year and uh, started me and a couple guys from college. Um, looking for a way to not get real jobs and uh, <laughs> at the time two-line sport kites had just just kind of sh showed up on the scene and they weren't particularly high-tech or anything at, the, at that time in the mid 80s and uh, a friend brought one back to college got hooked on flying it I was doing a lot of windsurfing and hang gliding and I'm, I'm a pilot and fascinated by stuff that flies and I was looking at these very very early two-line kites thinking gosh these, these could be a lot cooler and how come none of the technology that's going into windsurfers and sporting equipment um, how come none of that's in kites yet and that that kind of got me thinking I ended up buying a sewing machine and going to the local sail loft in Connecticut and buying scraps of uh, fabric from those guys and building kites uh, as a hobby initially um, spent some time on a sailboat after college and brought my kites over to Europe and flew them in some crazy places where people never seen sport kites before and everywhere I went I got a lot of attention and one thing led to another and ended up back in Seattle with a couple of buddies from college. Went to one of the early kite stores, which was in Seattle, and brought a couple of the kites I'd built. And the owner there was incredibly friendly and welcoming and said, you gotta do, you gotta, I could sell these, you gotta make these. And you know, like I said, we were, we were looking for a way to not get real jobs. And um, it was a bit of a lark. There was certainly no business plan, but we maxed out a couple of credit cards, bought a sewing machine and, uh, and a fax machine and a very early computer. All right. And set up shop in a little house in Seattle. Um, it was kind of a fake it till you make it sort of thing. Yeah. But we were making a, making a kite that looked like nothing anybody would ever seen before. It had a carbon frame and fully battened wings and it, it had all kinds of sail technology in it because I was racing sailboats. And mm -hmm. I'm fascinated by how those wings work and uh, a lot of what we did early on was bringing what was being done in sailing um, and mm -hmm. also in hang glider design and windsurfing um, and bringing those to kite wings and trying to figure out how they worked and make kites that we thought were cooler or cooler looking and flew in ways that people hadn't flown yet um, then we started making kites that could do more and more kinds of tricks and so the two-line trick thing kind of took off and it was a it was an exciting time oh well, yeah for sure <laughs> why don't you tell us a little bit about some of the tricks that you started experimenting with like because i've seen your way to fly video and mm -hmm. endlessly impressed by the ability of stunt kite flyers dual line flyers because i've never been able to i think i've successfully axled once and yeah. i've gotten a few fades done but you know how did these kites interact with the sort of growth of the sport well, if you if you get into flying sport kites and you you take one out on a nice day and you start messing around with it, invariably you start making mistakes and mm -hmm. the kite will do a funny thing. And mm -hmm. all a trick is is a funny thing that you can repeat on demand. And so if you get into it, you start realizing that you can control this thing even when it's not flying forward. You can control it when it's flying backwards. You can control it when it's on its back. And so there was this evolution that happened um, for us in Seattle. And then there were a couple of guys in, in California who were also kind of exploring, well, what happens when you stop a kite from flying? What happens if you tip it on its back? And we're, this was all kind of early, early 90s. Um, and it was kind of a stepwise, whoa, I made the kite do that, I wonder if I can make it do it again. And then it was, well, can I design a kite that does that better? Mm -hmm. And these tricks like backflips and fades and axles and the various kinds of somersaults and re ground recoveries and things, they, they all just evolved out of the fascination with, you know, how far can we take this? And, and the ability to design kites and kind of understand how they work came along with that and kites became more and more capable. Uh, yeah. You can do amazing things with two lines that 
people never even realized. Absolutely. Why don't you tell us about some of the models of kites that, you know, some of your favorites that you've designed over the years and some of the oh, things gosh. that you guys are that's making probably, now. That's a little out of our scope at this point just because <laughs> we, we do so much. Um, we started out specialized in high-end sport kites for people mm. who are really into the sport and gradually, you know, we've always had a couple of really good entry-level kites for people to get hooked because um, once you are hooked, you you're going to need more kites. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've been there before. So we, we have some great starter for sport kiting, great starter kites like the Quantum, which is a, just a great all-around kite. It's not perfect at any one thing, but it'll do everything, and you won't ever outgrow it. Um, but we also make a wide range of single-line kites. We make parafoils, uh, both dual line, three line, and four line parafoils. Mm -hmm. We make some big power kites to pull you around on the land, and um, we don't do water kites for kiteboarding. That's really turned into a different industry. Mm -hmm. But um, at this point, our, our range of products is, is pretty big, from a take it out once in a while on vacation and put it up while you have a picnic kind of kite, to um, some really high-tech sport kites, uh, yeah. power kites, big range of stuff. So tell us what it's like to be in the Outer Banks, flying on the ground where the Wright brothers took their historic 1903 flight. Well, it's, it's always a treat. I've been coming here 30 years, and it's, it's always neat to be here. There's, there's just a there's a history about it. Uh, it's, it's like no other place. Love it. Well, thanks, Mark. We love having you here. Thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. Be back. Mark okay. Reed from PRISM.